My name is Dor Sarig, and I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders of Pillar Security. And so what brings you to Udicon? Yeah, I was invited to Udicon um, through uh, Bob and Matt, who I met in the past. Um, I run a cybersecurity company that help uh, secure AI systems, and they invited me to speak in the uh, conference about you know, the topic of fusion of like AI and cybersecurity. Um, it's the first time I'm here at the Udacon. So far, so good. Um, yeah. Good. Um, so you're going to be talking about AI and cybersecurity. Correct. Um, what are some of the key themes that you're going to be speaking to and that you are bringing with you to Udacon? Yeah. So the key themes are mainly to discuss, you know, like AI is a very abstract thing. So like what, what, what really AI is or like what the change it brings and, and based on understanding what's the change, like so what's the gap now that's created and requires us to you know, like rethink security. Um, and also we're going to talk about me and Jay Healy, who's going to moderate this uh, fire chat, um, about how AI can be leveraged both for defense and for offensive. Um, we probably will use like known frameworks like um, NIST um, to kind of like go and like, you know, sift through like the pros and cons. Um, we also maybe if we'll have time cover some of the findings of the, re the report that we recently released at Pillar. And this report is covering for the first time real attacks on, on AI system that uh, we've seen in the wild. So or maybe I'll like explain like what, what brought us into like doing this report, like the motivation behind it is, is you know, AI is transforming like every business today. Um, and, and there's a lot of, of research that is done about like the, the gaps of, of AI, like security wise, like responsible AI. Um, and, and on the other hand, um, we're seeing the, the mass adoption. But what we were uh, really lacking is, is how those, you know, risk threats are really happening in the wild, if there are. So what we did is collected a lot of uh, telemetry data from our uh, partners and we analyzed this data and found real attacks in the wild and like using different techniques to uh, manipulate or bypass um, rules of AI systems. Um, and we probably may discuss some of the, of the findings, yeah. Um, so maybe to kind of build on that a little bit, mm -hmm. um, AI security, very much a an emerging practice, right? Um, maybe you can talk a little bit about how you see that, based on your research, how you see that taking shape, um, especially as it relates to national security, um, especially, you know, future focused. Yeah, how it's taking shape. Well, if we can like think, bring it to the ground, AI, um, it's not a tool, but an agent, right? It has agency, it can make decisions. So when um, you think about from, from, from this uh, point of view, then when you take this um, decision-making uh, um, software, which is a new kind of software, and you put it in a mission-critical uh, applications, then um, you need to be uh, sure that the AI will do exactly what it, it tells, like it, it needs to do, um, and not going like, you know, like, uh, two areas that uh, we don't want it to. Um, and, and the reason for that is because AI can create, it can reason, and because of that, it can interact. So um, everything we know about security, security for a traditional kind of software, which is logic-based, is no longer relevant in the case of AI. So it's not uh, um, um, logic-based software, it's, it's, it's prompts and, and data-driven software its goals that you need to uh, achieve with the application. Um, and yeah, kind of like, I think. Uh, <laughs> I mean, so how, how do you start taking steps toward securing against, you know, this is a completely yeah. uncharted territory, um, totally different landscape. So how do you start taking steps towards securing against, you know, against AI going rogue? Um, keeping it mission focused and under human control? Yeah, that's a good question. So first in security, you know, you can't protect what you can't see. So you start with visibility. Um, because AI is a new software and the way you build this software is also entirely new. 
So um, the traditional software development lifecycle um, is, is or, or on the security controls that are, uh, you know, protecting each of the phases in this lifecycle are um, kind of like needs to be updated to the, the AI development lifecycle. Um, and the first thing we, know to, we want to do in this process is like to be in the very first stage where like, uh, you know, people in the organizations are interacting with those models. So um, usually when you build an AI application, uh, you take a model or you train a model, you fine tune a model, you use data. Sometimes it will be very sensitive data. So in this process, new uh, attacks, uh, new risks are, are, are created. Um, and the idea is like to be first like very uh, on the shift left of, of this like uh, process. So visibility. And then the, the second thing we uh, that needs to be done is because this is non-deterministic software, you want to put guardrails, some sort of like a firewall or a moderator that will basically um, analyze everything that goes through the model. Let's see if it's uh, like aligns with the uh, you know, company's policies and the rules it was defined or the business use case and everything that comes from the model to make sure it's not leaking any sensitive data or saying something toxic or harmful, right? So this is like the, the guardrails aspect. And the third thing is, also because it's like non-deterministic software, um, you need to continuously test it because it can change. Like so many moving parts, the model, the um, data you provided, the instructions. So um, it's like how, how um, I think like the security needs to be done. So like visibility, see everything, protect, put the, the right guardrails and continuously test to see if you're missing something or identify new threats. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and so how does pillar security contribute to all of this? Yeah, so pillar security in a nutshell um, enable teams to identify and mitigate risks across this entire AI development lifecycle. And, and the way do it, we do it is like very elegant and, and easy. You can think of pillars like this magic uh, pill that you swallow and like travels and maps the intestines of intestines like an X-ray. Um, to your application. So the first thing, because it's a black box, you want to understand like as much as you can about how it operates and, and what are the gaps. So this is what brings us the visibility. We are identifying like what models are in use, um, what are the system prompts or the instructions that are given for this application. So kind of creating an inventory, which is also required um, you know, by regulations and um, this kind of stuff. And then the second thing we do is put the guardrails and uh, allow the user, the security teams, to really um, configure them based on the policies and, and what's allowed um, and what's not. Um, and, and if there's a, a policy violation, that also like trigger and let you know that something is wrong and worth investigation. So this is like the, the new threat investigation um, that will be done. And then the third thing we're doing is um, the continuous testing. So we're kind of like, because we are understanding how the application is built, we are creating a digital twin of the application. And on this replica, we are continuously running attacks. So we're using AI to attack and test AI. And, and, and the result of that is all the gaps, all the things, all the um, edge cases, right? That um, when you build like AI software, you don't know about because you need to test it. You need to see how it behaves. Um, so that's, that's pillar in, in, a, in a nutshell. And the idea is not only to you know, leave you with all the vulnerabilities we found, but to allow um, the red teaming component, like the testing, to um, feed the information or the results directly to the guardrails. So we can improve the guardrails, make them adaptive. So whenever we find new uh, vulnerabilities, we can immediately update the um, database or the threat uh, detection um, engine to be able to detect those threats. Is there anything else that I didn't ask about that you would like to touch on that you think is important? Um, you know, just like the fact that I guess everyone is now seeing that AI um, is, is really here to stay. And, 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 and I think that when we really like try to understand what it means is, is, is first that it completely changed the way we uh, build and interact with software. So this is like the most important thing for me to say. And, and because of that, it's like a completely new thing. Then everything we know about security, securing software also is like changing in front of our eyes. And, and we're very proud of Pillar to be like part of this and, and 